This video is the second video in our Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions series. To add or subtract rational expressions, we must have a common denominator. And in this case, we do have the same denominator of x minus 1, which means we're going to keep that denominator. And all we have to do is add the numerators together. And 4 plus 6 gives us 10. And that's it, 10 over x minus 1. Here's another one, has a common denominator of x plus 5, which means we're just going to keep that common denominator. We're going to add these numerators together. There are not like terms, so 2x plus 10 is 2x plus 10. Now you might think you're finished, but think back to simplifying rational expressions, and you have got to factor anything top or bottom that potentially could cancel. So I can factor a 2 out of the top, and look there, you have the same x plus 5 in the top and the bottom. They are identical binomials. We can cancel them out, so all we're going to get is an answer of 2. Now is that always going to happen on these? No, but you need to look to see if either the top or the bottom factors. Similar one. Now this minus here, you might want to change to plus and negative if that helps you any. We have a common denominator of x minus 3. We can just put those together and we have 4x minus 12. Take a look at the top. Does it factor? Yes, there's a common factor of 4. And I'm in the same situation with the x minus 3's canceling, and I'm just going to get an answer of 4. Now this is where you really need to be careful with the minus in front of the fraction. The minus distributes through the whole top, so this is where changing this to plus a negative, but you've got to distribute the negative all the way through the top. So this is what it looks like on the next step. That used to be a positive a, it became a negative a. Used to be a positive 2, became a negative 2. Now it's a matter of keeping the common denominator and looking for like terms. 3a and a negative a can go together. Negative 4 and negative 2 go together to give us 2a minus 6. Now you might be tempted to try to cancel these things out individually, but you can't. You can't cancel the 2a's, you can't cancel the 6 and the 3. Recall from simplifying rational expressions, you can only cancel identical binomials. So I'm going to need to factor a common factor out of the top. The common factor is 2. But even with the factoring, nothing's going to cancel. Do not take that 2 with that 2. That is a monomial. That is a binomial. You cannot cancel a monomial with part of a binomial. That means that either one of these is your answer. You could give your non-factored answer, or you could give the factored answer. They are both correct. Same kind of problem. The minus here needs to distribute through here, so I would suggest right off the bat you change that to a plus and distribute that negative through there, which is going to give you that line right there. You have a common denominator. Keep the common denominator, and then just put these like terms together. 4x minus 3x gives us an x minus 2 over x minus 6. Sometimes people make a mistake of trying to cancel those x's, but that's a binomial. That's a binomial. You can never cancel part of a binomial with part of another binomial. Sometimes you have to add a whole number to a fraction, and there's two ways to do this, but the way I like to think about it is like a mixed number. 8 and 4 fifths can be changed to an improper fraction by just doing the whole number times the bottom, Add it to the existing numerator. So 8 times 5 is 40, plus 4, over the denominator. You're going to keep this denominator. This is going to give you the improper fraction 44 fifths. Well, 8 plus 4x over x minus 3 is like a mixed number. Here's your whole number. Here's your fraction. So I'm going to do this addition by thinking about this in this improper fraction routine. I want to change this to an improper. Well, the denominator is x minus 3, which says I'm going to keep that denominator, and I'm going to multiply the whole number times the entire bottom, which means i got to distribute. 8 times the whole thing here will give us 8x minus 24 plus the existing numerator. All I have to do is put some like terms together. 8x plus 4x is 12x minus 24 over this x minus 3. Like the other ones, check to see if you have any factoring. We do. We can factor a 12 out of the numerator. However, nothing's going to cancel. These are not identical binomials, so either one of these is an appropriate answer. I would think about changing this to plus a negative just to remind you that that is a negative 3 up there. That's not crucial, but for some people that's helpful. 
Same thing, we're going to keep that denominator of x plus 4, and we're going to multiply the whole number times the bottom. So that's going to give us 12x plus 48, because we distributed 12 through there, minus 3, over the existing denominator. We have some like terms right here. Put them together, we have 45. There is a common factor of 3 I could take out of the top, but nothing's going to cancel, so either one of those answers would be fine. Now going back to monomials for a second, because I'm getting ready to do binomial denominators that are not like denominators, and I want to make a point to you, and that is this. These two denominators have absolutely nothing in common to them. That means the common denominator for these two denominators is just their product. 3x squared times 5y gives me 15x squared y. So that here's an important rule. If the denominators have no common factors, then the common denominator is the product of the two denominators. That's going to be very helpful for us when we move into binomials. I'll say it again. If the denominators have no common factors, then the common denominator is the product of the two denominators. Note, x is not a common factor. Yes, x is part of the expression, but it's not a common factor. What I mean by common factor is this idea. 2 is a factor of 6 because 2 divides evenly into 6 three times. For x to be a common factor of x plus 3, that would mean x would divide evenly into x plus 3, and it doesn't. x plus 3 is a binomial. x is a monomial. We know from previous videos you cannot cancel part of a binomial with a monomial. So even though there's this common letter x, that does not mean it is a common factor. So the common denominator here is going to be the product of these two. Since these have no common factor, the common denominator is the product of the two denominators. We're going to do like we did in the first video and decide what to multiply this fraction by to create this equivalent fraction. Here's x plus 3, here's x plus 3. What we don't have is x minus 2, so we need to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. Of course, we don't really want to multiply this out. We've just written it as x plus 3 times x minus 2. We do want to distribute this, and you need to write this out. Don't try to do it in your head. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x. With this fraction, okay, we've got x minus 2. What we don't have is x plus 3. That means that's the quantity we need to multiply on the top and bottom. Distribute this out. Gives us 3x plus 9. At this point, we're in good shape because we have our common denominator. We've created these new numerators, so it's now a matter of just putting the like terms together. 4x squared has nothing to combine with, so it stays. Negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x plus 9 over this common denominator that we have already established, x plus 3 times x minus 2. There is always a possibility at this step that we can do some factoring of the numerator and canceling. The numerator does not factor at all, so there's no reason to try to go through the factoring steps. So this is going to be our final answer. However, you will find some where the numerator does factor, and it does cancel with the denominator, so you need to be in the habit of factoring them out.